Well, good morning, New Life Church. Happy New Year. Will you stand on your feet with us as we get ready for worship this morning? If you're joining us online, we're so glad that you've joined us as well. Come on, let's sing this together. There is a light that burns in the darkness. There is a hope that washes the fear away. There is a peace that settles around us. It is your love that sets our hearts ablaze. Father, we're on our knees with every heartbeat. We bring you this offering. Lord, come and fill this place. Father, we're crying out. Spirit, we need you now. Glorious love surrounds us. Lord, come and fill this place.
sing that this morning. And I will worship you. I will worship you. I will worship you always. Jesus, at the very beginning of this year, God, we just want to come and we want to worship you. We want to give you all of our praise. We want to give you all of our glory. Jesus, we want to give you all of our worship this morning. There is no one that even comes close to you, Jesus. And so from the very beginning of this year, we want to lift you up. Hallelujah, Jesus. Who else would rocks cry out to worship? Whose glory taught the stars to shine Perhaps creation longs to have the words to sing But this joy is mine Come on church, sing it out With a thousand hallelujahs We magnify your name Yeah. 
go ahead and be seated. Let's just stay in this attitude of worship that we're experiencing right now. It's the first day of the year. What a great day to be able to share in communion together. Hopefully you got a cup and a little piece of bread when you came in. If you didn't, you might go back um, to the entrance and grab one of those from the usher there. But when we have communion, it is a reminder to us of what Jesus did for us, his sacrifice on the cross. And every time we share in communion together, it's an opportunity for every one of us to dedicate our lives to Christ, a rededication. What a great day to do it here on January 1st. 2023 and so if you'll take that bread out it's a reminder of the broken body of Jesus he gave his all for us and in response he invites us to surrender all to him Galatians 2:20 says I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live right the life I live I now live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me so let's close our eyes and let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus and here on this first day of the year, we acknowledge our need for a savior, our need for grace, forgiveness, the presence of God, the Lordship of Jesus in our life, Lord. We look to you, we let go of the past, we confess our sins to you and we give you our future. Jesus, thank you that you paid a high price for our sins out of love. And we acknowledge that today. And in response, we do what's appropriate. We put our trust in you. We dedicate our lives to you, to be obedient to you, to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and take the bread and eat it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm, amen. And this cup that we hold, Jesus actually asked the Father to take the cup of suffering away from him. He knew what, he, what was coming. And he said, if there's any way, please take this from me. And yet he said, not my will, but yours be done. There is something powerful about that submission to the Father. And because of that one-time transactional event that took place in him trading his blood for our lives, offering up his for ours that allowed us all to be forgiven at that moment that was done never to be needed again and we just have to receive it and so when you take this blood receive it the way this cup as representative of his blood that just receive it the way that he gave it with love receive his love today receive his forgiveness receive everything that it does to bring healing and wholeness to you. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are truly an amazing Savior. Lord, that we have a Savior who gave everything so that we could have everything. Lord, we receive the love that you offer us. We receive the forgiveness. We receive the grace. We thank you, Lord, that because of that, we get to live in freedom, in wholeness. We receive all of it as we take this cup in your name, amen. Go ahead and drink it all. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand together and continue to worship Jesus.
same God. You are the same God. You answered prayers back then. You knew will answer now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You were providing then. You are providing now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You moved in power then. God moved in power now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You were a healer then. You are a healer now. You to worship today and Bethany said this earlier but the best way to start off a new year is by worshiping Jesus that is the best way there's no other resolution there's no other goal for the year that is better than putting Jesus front and center in our lives so I'm gonna pray and I'm gonna read out of Colossians 1 starting in verse 15 and it just declares who God is who Jesus is so would you bow your heads as we pray this thank you Jesus you are the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by you all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through you and for you. And you are before all things, and in you all things hold together. And you are the head of the body, the church. You are the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything you might be preeminent. For in you all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through you to reconcile to yourself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of your cross. Jesus, we worship you today. You are the first. You are the beginning and the end. And Lord, we just start off this year, 2023, by fixing our eyes on you and saying, Jesus, you are Lord of our lives. Have your way in us, have your way through us, in this church, in our families, in our community, Lord. We worship you today. We give you all the praise and all the glory. And in Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. 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 You may be seated. Good morning and happy new year. Yeah. Guys, my name is Amanda and this is Pastor Rachel. We are so glad that you're here with us this morning. If you are new this morning, we have a way that we would love to connect with you, whether you're in the room or joining us online. You can do that through a Next Steps card. So if you're joining us online, that is in the link in the comment section. If you're here in the room, there is a card in the seat back in front of you. However you fill that out, we would just love to get to know you better. And if you've been a part of our New Life family for a while now and are ready to take a next step, whether it's in serving or connecting or maybe it's water baptism, I would love for you to fill that card out as well. And we just want to say thank you for continuing to be a church that practices generosity and meets the needs here in the building, but also in our community. And if you came prepared to give today, you can text NL Everett to 94000. You can give online or through the app. And here in the room, there's also some boxes you can drop off on your way out. 
So New Year, New Year's resolutions. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys, but reading scripture more, praying more, those are always good habits to have in our life. And so we're super excited because our New Life journal is ready for you in the courtyard. It is $10 for the journal. But if you are someone who maybe likes to write an entire book when you journal, first of all, amen. And second of all, you can go ahead and we actually have just the reading plan for you as well. There's no cost for that. So if you would like to use your own journal, but go ahead and read along with us, please pick that up in the courtyard. If you would like a digital version of the reading plan, we also have that in our New Life app. But please definitely join us in getting in the word and praying continuously as a community this year. Absolutely. And where are all the ladies in the room? Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. There you are. All right. We have a movie night coming up. We're going to be watching Mamma Mia. It's yes. going to be fantastic. We got some fans in the room. We're going to be watching Mamma Mia next Wednesday, January 11th at 630. It's going to be up in our theater right up here. It's going to be super fun. You're going to be greeted by Donna and the Dynamos. There's yes. going to be popcorn. There's going to be giveaways. And of course, while you're watching the movie, it's highly, highly encouraged to sing along with it. And we would love for you to join us, invite your friends. You don't have to pay for the event, but you do need to RSVP by going to newlifeeverett.org slash events. So good. Okay, so they're going to be singing, but is there going to be dancing? Like that's there better what I need be. to understand. <laughs> so good. And if you are a dude in the house, don't worry. We did not forget about you. We have a men's breakfast that is coming up on January 21st. It's a Saturday morning at 10 a.m. And it'll be worth showing up because I hear there's going to be just so much bacon like so much bacon like where are my crispy bacon eaters like i just really quickly you are my people and where are like the bubblegum bacon chewers yeah yeah okay we'll talk about that later lily um so we would love for the new life men to join us for this event there's going to be worship the word and just honestly a good time eating good food so we hope to see you there love it i've never heard the term bubblegum bacon before and i don't know if i like it but that's okay me neither. <laughs> <laughs> well, church, we're really excited this morning because we get to hear from Pastor Glenn Erickson. So would you welcome him as he makes his way to the stage? Thank you, Rachel. Hey, thanks, Amanda. If you've ever been up here, there are markings all over. I would not know where to put that. Thank you. Hey, well, Happy New Year, everybody. Everyone here and online. Uh, I realize it's been a while since I've been up here, so some of you may not know who I am. Uh, my name's Glenn. I'm one of the old timers here at New Life. I've been, I think this month is my 30th anniversary. And uh, yeah, awesome. Um, and I get the privilege of serving here as a bivocational pastor. And what that means is that I'm an ordained four score pastor that reports to the leadership here. So Matt and Heidi and uh, Susan, I kind of report to them, but I'm not on staff. So I make my living uh, as an engineer, an engineering manager. I do product research and development, uh, but once in a while, I get up here. So thanks for letting me come up here. Um, I'm going to uh, try to use my engineering skills today. I know we have some young kids in the house. I'm gonna try to go fast, shrink the message a bit, and uh, so you're gonna have to keep on track. There's gonna be some slides up on top. Hopefully the AV guys can keep up with me. But here we go, you ready? Yes. All right. So, I believe that today, the start of the new year, God wants to remind us of his ongoing invitation into relationship with him. That he wants to constantly remind us that he wants time with us, relationship with us, and that that time together is meant to be an adventure led by his Holy Spirit. So let's imagine that God sent us an invitation today. We're going to put it up on the screen. This is an invitation that God is sending us. It would go like this. I, God, this January 1st, 2023, invite, and now you put your name in there. I invite you to a deep relationship with me in a spirit-led adventure. That is a personal invitation to everyone here and everyone online. All right, now when we see that word adventure, we might think of skydiving or mountain climbing, things like that. And you might think that only certain people could have an adventure with God, but that's not the case. I wanna put a definition of adventure up on the screen here. So an adventure 
is an exciting or remarkable experience, often involving unknown risks. In fact, a lot of times it's those risks that make it an adventure, right? That make it exciting. Okay, so if that is an adventure, what is a spirit-led adventure? Well, spirit-led adventure is an adventure initiated by obedience to the leading of the Holy Spirit. So in other words, when we follow the Holy Spirit, oftentimes that following turns into an adventure. Now, it doesn't mean that every time you follow the Holy Spirit, you're going to be able to write some great big book about something that happened. But here's what it does, here's what it does mean. This means that the Christian walk, our journey with Jesus, is meant to be exciting, remarkable, and risk-taking. That's what the Christian walk is meant to be. And you'll notice by these definitions that anyone can have a spirit-led adventure. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter your gender, your race, your financial status. Anyone here in this room, anyone online, can have a spirit-led adventure. And that is the invitation that God extends to us today, this first day of 2023. Now, there's something very interesting, I find, about an adventure, and it's this, that we can choose our level of adventure. We can choose how much we engage in this adventure. See, God will not force us to do anything that we don't want to do. We have free will. And God will meet us wherever we are. This is what we love about God. God will meet us right where we are. He loves us unconditionally. That makes us happy. But you know what makes us uncomfortable? What makes us uncomfortable is that God never intends for us to stay the same. He's always calling us to become more like Jesus. He's constantly calling us to become more like Jesus. All right, so... If we do that, if we become more like Jesus, then we will have spirit-led adventures. We will. We just will. So I'm just going to assume that everyone here is going to be all in. And here's the thing. We can increase our adventure level by doing certain things. So I'm going to give you three action items. And these action items, if we do them, will help us increase our adventure level led by the Holy Spirit. So action item number one. Pursue Jesus. Pursue Jesus. So let's be really clear. Any spirit-led adventure begins with Jesus. It just does. See, the pursuit of Jesus is the foundation of everything that we're talking about today. Do you know it's Jesus who makes the unthinkable possible? One of the missions of Jesus was to make a way for the Holy Spirit to live within us so that we could be led by the Holy Spirit. That's, it, it's really impossible for our brains to fully grasp that. But this is what Jesus said. I'm going to read a section of uh, verses here. Uh, and it's Jesus speaking to the disciples, which means he's speaking to us in these verses. And when you see the word helper and the expression spirit of truth, both of those are names for the Holy Spirit. So this is what Jesus said. He said, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. Now, here's the big part. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. When we wholeheartedly are all in for Jesus, when we, we, we're in all the way, the Holy Spirit takes up residence within us. It's an amazing thing. It's beyond our comprehension, really. But now, now we're equipped to have spirit-led adventures. So it all starts with Jesus. You know, the Holy Spirit helps us increase our relationship with God. Did you know, you know, we were here worshiping today. The Holy Spirit will always exalt the Father and glorify the Son. That's why we're here worshiping today. The Holy Spirit helps us in our relationship with God. All of that, all of that is founded on our ongoing pursuit of Jesus. All of that. All right. Let's look at action item number two. Pursue growth in character. All right. So remember, we just said God does not intend for us to stay the same. 
So we're called to grow to take on the character of Jesus. Well, what does that look like? What is the character of Jesus? Well, it's the fruit of the Spirit. So let me read Galatians 5, 22, 23. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Wow, we're supposed to be known by that. We're supposed to be known by that. The tricky part is, we can't become that on our own. We don't have what it takes to become that. But when we pursue growth in our character, the Holy Spirit will help us. And that becomes a transformational process. It's a transformational process where the Holy Spirit helps us to think and act differently. Okay, now, remember how we started out saying that a spirit-led adventure involves risk. The pursuit of character growth is very risky. It's very risky. See, character growth means that we um, will look at ourselves realistically and honestly. It means letting our guard down. And it means becoming vulnerable. Yuck. Who wants that? That's risky stuff. See, in a sense, kind of metaphorically, Pursuing character growth means we allow the Holy Spirit to shine his light on our dark places. That's kind of what it means. You know, we may find God asking us to do things that we don't want to do, like admitting that we're wrong. Who wants to do that? We may find that uh, God wants us to seek help. I don't know about you, I have a hard time asking for help sometimes. It may involve seeking professional help. We may need to say, see a therapist. Who knows? It could be whatever, but whatever it takes, God may ask us to take these steps that are risky to work on our growth of character. But I want you to know it's worth it. It is totally worth it. Because when we take these risks, when we move out and take the risks and allow the Holy Spirit to change our character to look like Jesus, we have spirit-led adventures. Let me give you some examples of what those spirit-led adventures look like when we pursue growth in our character. How about we experience adventures like renewed marriages. We experience adventures like restored family relationships. We experience adventure, the adventure of having healthy self-esteem and the destruction of suicidal thoughts. These are adventures. We have the adventure of knowing that we have a life of hope. All those things, joy, peace, patience, these come out of our pursuit of uh, character growth. We pursue character growth, we take the risk, but it's worth it. It's totally worth it. The third action item is to desire and use spiritual gifts. Now, we don't have time uh, for a full teaching on this today, so I'm going to give you a quick summary. So, first of all, we all have God-given abilities to serve others. So, you'll notice... I mean, if we just looked around this room and we knew the people online, there are some people that are just like naturally gifted teachers. There are people that are just naturally generous. We have a lot of those here. Uh, you'll notice even in kids at a very young age, there are some kids that just like to help. Okay, that's like a gift of helps. So all of us are made differently, and we each have these types of God-given spiritual gifts, these areas of strength that we use to help others. But in addition to those kind of gifts, kind of the way we're made, the way we're wired, the Holy Spirit will often equip us with a gift for a specific moment that we then give away. And that gift is used to benefit somebody else. So the Holy Spirit, for example, may give you some wisdom that you can share with someone. The Holy Spirit may give you a word of encouragement for someone else. Or maybe you know how to pray for healing. These spiritual gifts may be very, very different from the way you're just naturally wired. They could be very different. But here's what Scripture says. Scripture says that these gifts are so valuable that we're supposed to desire them. We're supposed to desire them. So all these gifts, the way you're born, the Holy Spirit giving you specific gifts for a given moment, all these gifts are meant to serve others, to serve others. So this is how the Apostle Peter says it. He said, 1 Peter 4, 10 and 11, this is what Peter says. He says, as each has received a gift, use it. He says, use it 
to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that everything, that in everything, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. And by the way, again, in all this, Jesus is central. Jesus is central in all that we do. See, when we desire spiritual gifts, and then we use the gifts that we have, do you know what we're doing? We're telling God that we want to be part of his adventures. That's what we're telling him. But again, I, I want us to be really clear here, this is risky. It's risky. What if you are an introvert and the Holy Spirit prompts you to speak to a group of people? What if you are an extrovert and the Holy Spirit tells you to go sit in a corner and be quiet? Right? This is risky stuff. What if the Holy Spirit asks you to pray for healing for someone and they're not expected to live? That's risky stuff. What if you're called to teach the very people that push all of your buttons? Right? This is risky stuff. But just like character growth, these risks are totally worth it. See, our relationship with God and each other deepens when God works through us. See, when God uses us to restore lives, to set people free from bondage, to bring hope and peace to desperate situations, there's something that's so deeply satisfying that you can't get any other way. Because, this, you, because of this, you see the heart of God in action, and you actually are participating with him to see what he's up to. It's risky, but it's so worth it. It is so worth it. Now, there's nothing complicated, really, about these uh, three things. I mean, if you think about it, pursue Jesus, pursue growth in character, and desire and use spiritual gifts. Those are kind of straightforward. But I want to talk now about something that often stops us from doing those three things. And it's this. Because spirit-led adventures involve risk, we may be afraid to move forward because we don't know the future. The fear kicks in because we, may, we just don't know what's coming up. See, it would be so much easier to take a risk if we knew it was going to happen. It's way easy to be vulnerable if you know someone's going to meet you with love, right? If we are going to live spirit-led adventures, then we're going to need to get comfortable with this principle of the Christian faith. And here's the principle. It's this. The Holy Spirit will show us enough to take a step forward, but we may not see the entire journey. Let me say that one more time. The Holy Spirit will show us enough to take a step forward, but we may not see the entire journey. That's the principle of the Christian faith. So let me give you kind of an analogy of that. So, so I started uh, hiking when I was a teenager, and I had a mentor. His name was Dr. Clark. He was the father of one of my friends, and we were out on a hike, and uh, it, it was in the Cascades here, and the sun was setting, and it got dark. There was cloud cover. It was, it was pitch black. So we had to hike still about five more miles in the dark. So we had these little miniature flashlights. We called them pen lights, you know, the kind that sticks in your pocket, a little clicker. And the thing about pen lights is they just light up the area just right in front of you. And so uh, that's what we got. We got those out. And we started hiking, and Dr. Clark just took off. He was, he was able to hike by that little circle of light really fast, and I wasn't. And so pretty soon he was, he was gone. I couldn't even see him. I'm just a lot by myself. And there's this one point where I saw a light way down below to the right of me, and I'm like, what is that? And I realized that we were on a section of switchbacks going back and forth. He was like three or four switchbacks down the trail, way ahead of me. And I don't know why uh, I panicked. I'm going to blame it on teenage hormones, but I just, I just panicked. I did. And all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm going to be lost. I'm going to be stuck out here. And Dr. Clark, I just know it. He's going to get to the truck, and he's going to leave me behind. He's going to do the Hansel and Gretel thing. <laughs> and, and that's how I felt. And so I panicked, and I decided that I would have to go faster. So I started going faster. The problem was my fear level was greater than my skill level. And I tripped. And I, I did the Superman pose where you launch out like this, <laughs> out into the dark. I was holding the light. I was not going to lose my light. I'm gripping it, so now the light's shining off into space, and I'm Supermaning right out, 
right out into the darkness. And it's funny, there was no way I could control where I was going to land, how I was going to land. And it's funny what your brain does in things at moments like that. All my brain kept saying was, this is going to hurt. This is going to hurt. And that's what just kept going through my head. And it did hurt. I landed pretty hard. Uh, I split my knee open. Uh, when I hit, you know, my pack was on my back. It drove me into the ground. And uh, I just had to recover a bit because it was, it was a pretty good shot. But I was okay. Nothing was broken. And so I got up, and I'm sitting there, and I'm, like, walking along, and I'm thinking, what's going on? I had, like, this epiphany. Wait a minute. My lights, I can still the trail. My light works. I can see the trail. This trail goes to the truck. All I have to do is just keep going along, and Dr. Clark's not going to leave me. Of course he's not. In fact, I, he would come back for me. If I was there hurt, he'd come back for me. At that realization, the hike became fun again. It was like exciting. Like, what's going to show up in this light? It's very different to hiking in the dark. The sounds are different at night. And like, wait, I think I hear something. Pretty soon I'd see this dream. And so it became very fun, a very different type of hike. I knew I was going to arrive at the trailhead. All I had to do was stay on the path with my light. That's all I had to do, step by step. And I think this is a useful analogy for our spirit-led walk, for our spirit-led adventure, sorry. Just like that pen light shining on the trail, see, God reveals in us so that we can move forward. And we may know kind of where we're headed, but the actual day-to-day -day steps are unveiled as we move forward. Okay, so now I have some bad news, I have some good news, and I have some bonus good news, all right? Here's the bad news. There's one thing in this analogy that we do not like to hear, but if you hike enough, you're going to stumble. You're going to fall. You're going to trip. All right? It's just going to happen. And it is the same thing with our spirit-led adventure. Just accept, just accept that somewhere along the way in your spirit-led adventure, you're going to struggle. You're going to get tired. You're going to trip. Just accept that. But here's something very important, very important. If we only move forward, if we can guarantee perfection or success, we will limit the spirit-led adventures waiting for us. Now, here's another important key. We need to be wise with the risks that we take. But if we try to avoid all risks, we will not get to where God's calling us. We will not get there. Okay, ready for the good news? Here's the good news. What God teaches us in those hard moments is the same thing as that epiphany I had on that hike. I knew that Dr. Clark wasn't going to leave me. He, wasn't, he would help me if I needed it. And here's the thing. If a human mentor will do that for us, how much more will the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit will never leave us. The Holy Spirit never gets tired. The Holy Spirit never stumbles, ever. I want to read a verse to you that was written by the Apostle Paul. This is one of the greatest adventure verses in the whole Bible. You know, Paul lived what we've been talking about here. Listen to what Paul wrote. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything Anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. That's our adventure verse. That is our adventure verse. See, it's an understanding of God's love for us that gives us the courage to have a spirit-led adventure. You know, the Apostle John said that perfect love casts out all fear. When we grasp that nothing keeps us from the love of God, you know what? A spirit-led adventure is not far behind. It's just not far behind. Because it's God's love for us and that removal of fear that helps us move forward. Okay, are you ready for the bonus good news? <laughs> I'm almost done. That's the bonus good news. <laughs> um, now, here's the thing. Not only... I am almost done, though, by the way. Not only does nothing separate us from the love of God... But God has given us each other. 
That's the bonus good news. We're, we're not alone in our Christian walk. We're, we're not. And I believe that today, at the start of 2023, not only is God extending this invitation to us individually for a spirit-led adventure, but he's extending that to us all together. And you online to everyone, all of us together. Well, how do we do that? Well, guess what? We'll just do those same three action items, but we're going to do them together. So what are we going to do? We're going to pursue Jesus together. We're going to help each other pursue growth in our character. And we're going to find our place serving together as we desire and use our spiritual gifts. We do that all together. So we do it individually and together. And when fear kicks in, tries to slow us down, we're going to rest in God's perfect love knowing that God will never leave us, ever. See, I said this was a simple message, and it really is. But this, this will challenge us because there's true risk involved. This means that uh, we're going to be vulnerable to each other if we do this. But God loves us so much, he's going to help us. And here's the thing, we'll help each other because if we're pursuing growth in character, we're going to love each other. And God's there to help us. It's risky, but it's totally worth it. Totally worth it. I want to uh, end here by just praying for you in this area of fear. And uh, I was thinking about this. I, was, I, I know, I know that in this place and at home that many people wrestle with fear. They're afraid to step out. It's, it's a scary thing at times. And I thought about having you, like, if you are afraid, you know, deal with fear, raise your hand or stand up. I thought, no, that's, that's probably too scary to do. <laughs> so, so I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm just going to pray for everybody. I'm just going to pray for everybody. And uh, it's going to be a simple prayer. So, um, and, and uh, I'm going to keep my eyes, my eyes open because I kind of want to look at who I'm praying for. But let me just pray. Father, I thank you for everybody in this room. I thank you for everybody online. I thank you for everybody that's going to watch this video in the future. Father, I pray right now that your perfect love would fall upon everybody right now, that there would be an awareness that you are present with them. Father, I just pray for those that, that just are so worried that you are going to leave them, that they would understand right now, right now, that you're, right, you're with them, that you'll never leave them. Lord, let us have faith rise up right now in this place that people will know that you're with them without a shadow of a doubt. And I pray for any children in here who suffer at night from like night frights. I just pray, God, right now that you would help them sleep at night, your perfect peace. And I pray that for everyone here, God, that your peace would be on, upon each person in this coming year, now and in the coming year. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's let's thank Glenn again for sharing the word with us. Great word. Good message. Thank you, Glenn. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else all in on pursuing Jesus, growing in character, and using your gifts? Anybody in? Amen. You're gonna do it this year, 2023. I know that is a good word for me, and I'm all in. I'm gonna pursue that. So thank you for that word. If you haven't heard Glenn teach before, I would encourage you to check out his podcast. He actually has one. It's on Spotify. You look up Spirit Led Hope and you'll find it. About 20 minute segments, really, really good teaching on the Spirit Led life. So if you haven't looked at that, take a look at that. Also, after service, we have prayer teams that are up here, up front. We don't always announce it, but there are people who will be here after service who will pray for you about anything that you're facing. So maybe you need a healing. Maybe you're facing a challenge in your life. Don't just run for the door. Come on up. Receive <laughs> prayer. Uh, see what God does. Also, as you go today, I want to remind you to pick up a Bible reading plan or a journal. Um, I've got my Bible reading plan right here. I've got my own personal journal here. Journal here. So let's go on this adventure together, digging into God's word as well. Yeah. Are you ready for a new adventure in 2023? Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> I am. 
Let me read this verse before we go. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's Romans 15, 13. Amen. Enjoy your adventure. And Happy New Year.